time before the draft and even being in Boston, I think we realized that uh, it was probably not going to happen, uh, us playing together. I would normally announce who has the first selection, but we have three trades to announce. The last moment before the draft, we heard that the Canucks had pulled it off. The Vancouver Canucks are very proud to select Daniel and Henrik Sedin. Let's it go, he scores! We left on our terms. Uh, we knew it was time. Uh, we had kids in the in the age where they're so fun to be around. Like any other job, you miss the camaraderie, you miss the teammates, training staff, coaches you had, all that. Playoffs for sure. You you you. Whenever they make the playoffs, you're gonna you're gonna miss that, and that's gonna be tough to watch. Uh, not being out there in a, for a playoff game. The way things finished ended with the with the last couple of games, that was the the perfect way to to leave. We always realized that we would not be the players we were or the people we were without uh, the surrounding cast and the, the friends we, we made and the friends we had playing this game. So it should be a celebration about those people. Looking back, I think Trevor, Marcus and Stan would, would say the same things too. I think they, they had good teammates, leaders on their teams that kind of uh, taught them what it, what it took to be a professional hockey player. It's a great week. Uh, you know, first of all with the, with the Twins, the way they've represented the, the city, not just on the ice but off the ice. Two fantastic individuals. I think it's just a great week, even tonight with Legends Night. Uh, we're lucky to have people that we have coming back uh, that were great leaders for our group. Uh, it's a good example for our, our young players. You know, this is a huge week for the franchise and, and um, you know, to, to honor the Sabines basically all week, you know, remembering what they did for the city and for this organization. It's, I mean, they're uh, two world-class guys. And for a young guy seeing that, um, what they did for, for this organization, you just want to, you want to do half of what they did and, and, uh, and I'd be happy. All three have been captains and you guys know them all. They're great examples of what it means to be a Canuck on and off the ice. I want to personally thank them for everything they've done for the organization. You guys know them all. Trevor Linden, okay. Marcus Maslin, Dan Steele, again, all huge parts. We're, uh, we're grateful that you guys are here tonight. You've been a big part of our group over the last years. Great examples for our players. I think it's fitting that Eddie, Eddie, are you old enough to have played with Steamer? <laughs> I don't think so. No. But he's definitely played with these two guys, so I think Eddie should do the starters tonight. Oh, yeah! Eddie. Please welcome number 12, the steamer, over 40 years with the Canucks, Stan Smeal! It's very humbling, that's for sure, to take a look in the rafters and, and seeing your number up there. I think as a player, you, you never really uh, expect that or think those things are going to happen. Few have accomplished more in the game than number 16, Trevor Linden. You know, for myself, certainly there were players that had more talent than I did and, and you know, had bigger stats than I did, but it meant a lot to me because of, I believe it was uh, due to the contribution that I made to this city and this province. He's from the same hometown as Daniel and Henrik and was their first captain, number 19, Marcus Nesland. Being connected with, with Stan, Trevor, um, Henrik and Daniel and, and Pavel uh, means a lot because they're, they're uh, not only quality players but, but uh, people. Hello Canuck fans, 
Having my jersey retired with a stand Trevor Marcus and soon Salins is one of the greatest honors of my life. I was hoping to be there to celebrate with you. Unfortunately, cannot be in Vancouver for the ceremony, but I wanted to let you know how much the fans, the city and the Canucks mean to me. Four Canuck legends, cornerstones of excellence, shining reflections on our colorful past and enduring presence, a constant source of inspiration for a bright future. with this city is having a fan base that if, if you put in the effort you will have a full arena and, and you will have uh, loyal fans. I, I think this is a, is a welcoming environment. I think that that gets you going as a player too. Pretty tough to play against them. I mean the chemistry they had together, the way they cycled the puck and uh, protected the puck. They had the puck on the string. They made plays that, that guys couldn't. The ultimate competitors and the ultimate leaders. They were great role models for a lot of people in this town. They did great things on the ice, and they did even better things off the ice. So that's something I want to want to do in the future as well. You know, it's a special night that I think we're all lucky to be part of, really. It's uh, one of those nights that you'll probably look back and you'll always remember. It's a story that really will probably never grow to get. Two guys that come over, twins, boys to men to Hall of Famers, and. I think we're all just lucky to, to be part of this night tonight. Um, sorry, <laughs> I'm a little starstruck. Um, I really love the Sedins. Uh, they're the reason, <laughs> sorry, that I love hockey. It really touched me during their retirement. So I came all the way from Southern California to see this tonight. They're basically the guys that made me a Canucks fan. You know, they're like the top guys on this team for so long. And I play hockey now just because of them, watching them. So excited, just my heart is, it sounds crazy, but my heart is just like swelling. Sedins were just such a big part of my childhood growing up and the Canucks and everything. And they're just so classy on and off the ice. And they truly represent, I feel like, what it means to be like a hockey player and a Vancouverite and just part of this great city. Lots of great support from management and uh, coaches and former players, so we wanted them all to be here and uh, we're happy they, they all came. 
We had a few more names on the, on the list, but it's uh, you gotta keep it to a certain number. And but we felt like these these were the guys that meant the most. So it was great to see them here. Like there was never any hesitation of, of saying yes. Everyone we asked was uh, told right away that they were going to be here, and that's uh, something we'll always remember. To be here today is is obviously very special. Just seeing all the other guys that made the trip back and. No, really, it's celebrating 20 years of Canuck hockey, and the Twins are right at the forefront of that. Obviously, we all know their legacy on the ice, but uh, for me, it's more of the type of players and, and guys and friends that they were off the ice. Such uh, great people, uh, so humble and uh, caring for others. Hank and Danny taught me, um, you know, how to act off the ice, how to act on the ice, um, how to be a leader. Just how to be resilient, I would say. Teams played them hard on the ice every game and they just never complained. They just kept working and working and always wanted to get better every day. They were already so good, such good players, but they always strive for more. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time. Time to honor, time to celebrate the careers and lives of the greatest Canucks of all time, Daniel and Henrik Sedin. In front of all of our eyes, we've seen boys become men, men become leaders, and leaders become legends. We have many distinguished guests joining the Twins on the ice tonight. His courageous play and tremendous influence, his legacy landed him in the Ring of Honor, Matthias Olin. Remembered for the stanchion goal. Welcome back, Kevin Bieksa. His complete domination in the Western Conference semifinal in 2011 ensured the run to the Stanley Cup final would continue. Welcome back to Rogers Arena, Ryan Kessler. I was nervous before and to get that ovation not once but twice gave me goosebumps and, and still does just talking about it. It feels like uh, I'm ready to uh, move on to my next chapter now, right? You know, I, I almost start tearing up and, and uh, to be able to, to look around and have those fans standing up cheering back like they used to, it was, uh, it was a pretty special feeling that I'll never forget. The Great Dane, the Honey Badger, Yannick Hansen. The guy who slayed the dragon, the most recent inductee into the Ring of Honor, Alex Burroughs. From 2006 until 2014, he gave the Canucks a chance to win every game. Yeah, do it, Roberto Luongo. me chills every time. It still gives us, uh, you know, great feelings, great emotions to, to, to be recognized by the fans and getting standing ovations. They are simply put, the two greatest Canucks of all time. Please welcome Daniel and Henrik Sedin. Three things that I truly admired about these two guys over the years were their accountability, always looking themselves in the mirror first, never pointing the finger, shouldering the blame in the media for the rest of the team, how hard they worked through all the, the rollerblading in the summer and the, the trail runs and the bike races. They put themselves in a position where they were always the second and third best condition guys on the team. The third quality and the one that stands out to me the most is how kind and genuine they are. 
and how they treated everybody around them. If you've ever run into them before around the city in a coffee shop or a hockey arena or Ikea, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> These aren't jokes. <laughs> and there's a city and culture to this organization and I've already seen them pass it along to Petey and to Quinn and to Brock and they'll pass it along to the next generation of core players. In 20 years, there will still be a Sedin flavor to this organization and a Sedin culture in that dressing room. We love you guys, and there's no one more deserving of this honor. Skull. Canucks fans, it's so great to stand in his eyes again. Being part of the Canucks family has been the best period of our lives. Our first game was October 5th, 2000 in Philadelphia. And 13 games later, we we're receiving the biggest honor we could ever imagine. So many people were part of this journey and we wouldn't stand here without you. We will never forget the spring of 2011. It didn't end the way we wanted to, but to get a chance to play Game 7 of the Stanley Cup Finals was the highlight of our careers. To the people of Vancouver and British Columbia, We came here in 1999, and it felt like home from day one. We want to thank you for how you cheated us and our families. To play in front of you has truly been an honor, and nothing we've ever taken for granted. To the best fans in the league, we will now join you in cheering for this team when they go for the Stanley Cup. Thank you so much. slap pass, every cycle deep in the corner, every 90 second shift in the offensive zone terrorizing the opposition. This is for coming from a distant land and making our city your home. Ladies and gentlemen, Daniel and Henrik's numbers 22 and 33. It's been an emotional day, but when you see the banner go, go up and, and hit the roof, it's uh, pretty amazing. people for the organization, for the city, we're lucky to have you. Thank you for being out there. Great seeing you there. JT Miller to the goal line, centered, Horvath scores! Quick start for the Hawks, nothing to show for it, and another save by Markstrom. Here's Kane shooting, kicked out by Markstrom. Sutter, centers, Roussel, Godin scores! Tried to shovel it in, and Markstrom doing a snow angel made the save. You always want to win, especially when you know that he got his family here and all his friends, and he got people going on, flown in from Sweden, and you got all these uh, alumni that uh, have met a lot, meant a lot for this city. It's just great to see those guys, and 
you, you want to play good in front of them for sure. Since day one when we came here, it's, we said it before, it was ingrained in us that we, when you are a Canuck, you spend hours in the community and you, you try to do whatever you can. So that's, uh, that started way be before we came here. For us to be able to keep working with the Canucks as well as, as an organization and, and Canuck for Kids Fund, that uh, feels very good to us. The Canucks, uh, from day one, they do so many things in the community and, and uh, for us to, to keep uh, working with them and partner up with them, it's, uh, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun and hopefully we can do a lot of, a lot of good things. In a week where we have heard from hockey royalty, celebrated the legends, family, teammates, and those that influenced the Sedins, we conclude with some very special guests who Daniel and Henrik Sedin have profoundly influenced and brought hope and happiness to. During their tenure and with their leadership, the Canucks for Kids Fund has raised a staggering $42 million. It was never an obligation. It was always a willing privilege to serve their community. The thing that I took away from them the most is they're always even keel, so no matter what happened, they didn't get too high or too low. So it was important for, for me to learn that from them that uh, you know you always have to stay even keel because if you, your emotions get uh, the best of you, then it can affect your game. Well, the Canucks fans should remember the Sedins as being the ultimate uh, leaders. As two guys that were tough, smart, um, that maybe didn't uh, get all the credit that they deserved, and you know what, to be honest, um, they're finally getting it, so I'm, I'm happy about that. The culture of, of the Sedins is something that's going to live in this city a long time and uh, they're two pretty special people. I hope everybody enjoyed watching them play. Probably the two greatest players in Canucks history. Mm -hmm.